Hi everyone, welcome back to the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. It's a busy day here in studio because we're mixing it up a little bit. Four o'clock is Rick Simone with a special wedding show for you. But as we do every Thursday, I'd like to have in the former state representative, former Deputy Secretary of State, who now heads up the nonprofit Stages of Freedom, Ray Rickman, into the studio to give his big view. So we've got him here now. Thank you, Kay. Merry Christmas, everybody. So I, I made notes. You know, I make notes sometimes. Uh, I went with a large number of neighbors, most of us from College Hill, to the planning department meeting at uh, Providence uh, Annex City Hall the other night. Brown University came in and asked for permission to tear down five 1890s historic houses on Waterman and Angel. You know, two main streets on the east side. You drive by this whole block of historic houses and they want to tear them down and build an art center. You know, glass and metal, you know. You know what it looks like. Now, if you thought for two minutes, you would say how Kafka-like this is, tearing down historic houses in the heart of College Hill National Historic District. Now, you or I can't do that. You know that. So why can Brown do it? Well, they're in an institutional zone. It was created. And the deal was they'd stay in that zone, land they already owned, in exchange for being able to do things in the zone that you wouldn't normally be able to do, tear down historic houses. So here's the first problem. They haven't stayed within the zone. They've had it extended four or five times in the last 20 years. That's your first problem that these deal, they don't honor it, and the city permits them to buy additional land. The second problem is, when you tear down 1890s houses lived in by the super rich, they will never be replaced. But it weakens College Hill as a tourist attraction, as a place to study, as a place to look at fabulous architecture, some of the best architecture uh, on the East Coast. Now, Brown has, um, they have this thing that every two years they come to the city and ask to tear down historic houses. Um, it's like automatic. It's like, like they've got a clock and they come in to do it. Now, this one's worse than any because on this night at planning, they were there to talk about building a wellness center on a piece of land they own behind CVS on Thayer. They bought that land and added it about two years ago to the institutional zone. The city gave them permission to expand the zone and they were in the other night talking about building a wellness center on this new part of the zone. And then at the same meeting, same time, same presentation, they were talking about their right to tear down historic houses because we make them live in an institutional zone. Are you listening? It was so Kafka-like, it was unbelievable in the same setting out of the mouth of the same person. Now it gets even more unbelievable. You ready? On July 19th, Brown University went to the state and borrowed $171 million to do bonds, to build uh, four or five new buildings and the fixed five or six buildings. You with me? $171 million. Now, $61 million of that money was to pay off bonds that they borrowed through the state in 2007. So they got the state to give them the money to pay off the loan the state had helped them get in bond money in 2007. I wish I could get Sears or somebody to pay my Sears bill for me. Are you listening how unbelievable this is? The Providence Preservation Society is leading the effort to stop them from tearing down the five houses. I want you to help. I want you to help. They should not be able to use our bond money to tear down our historic district. Merry Christmas. <laughs>